I will ask ChatGPT to help me preparing a mock interview for an iOS interview. I need to prepare for an interview uh, for an iOS position. So could you help me to uh, with a mock interview? And I need that you will be my interviewer. Please ask me three questions about uh, Swift language and provide me feedback if I'm doing it right or if I need to uh, expand my explanation, please. Sure, Pedro, let's get started. I'll, I'll ask you three questions about Swift and you can answer them as if we're in an interview. Ready? First question, can you explain what optional chaining is and provide an example of how you would use it in Swift? Okay, well, optionals are a capability in Swift to enable data that is not uh, provided yet. So because by default, uh, a type in Swift it cannot be declared without any value. So optionals allow you to represent that absence of data. And well, that, well, kind of what I can uh, reply about that. Good start, Pedro. You've covered the basics of what optionals are. Let's focus on optional chaining specifically. Optional chaining allows you to call properties, methods, and subscripts on an optional that might currently be nil. If the optional contains a value, the call succeeds and returns the value. If the optional is nil, the call returns nil. Here's a more detailed example. Suppose you have a person class with an optional address property and the address class has a street property. You can see the code in our conversation history. In this example, person.address street uses optional chaining to safely attempt to access street even if address is nil. Let's move to the second question. Can you explain the difference between struct and class in Swift? Um, yeah. So, uh, well, struct is like a, a declaration that you can use to build a model. And in this case, uh, uh, it's more oriented to value. Um, but to be honest, I don't know so much about classes. I don't know exactly the difference. What is that? So um, I don't know if I answered your question. No problem, Pedro. Here's a bit more detail on the differences between struct and class in Swift. A struct is a value type. When you create an instance of a struct and assign it to a variable or pass it to a function, you are actually creating a copy of the instance. Any changes made to the copy do not affect the original instance. A class, on the other hand, is a reference type. When you create an instance of a class and assign it to a variable or pass it to a function, you are working with a reference to the original instance. Any changes made to the reference will affect the original instance. Here's a quick example to illustrate the difference. You can see the code in our conversation history. Lastly, let's go to the third question. What are some of the main features introduced in Swift 5.0? So that's a good one. Um, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> um, mm, no, I honestly don't remember exactly particular features for Swift 5.0 specifically. But if you're talking about in general, I will say uh, Resolve Builders, for example, that were introduced, not in 5.0, but later. Um, also, all the capabilities with Swift UI are provided from there. And I think one of the greatest updates there was like um, the uh, API stability, which means that uh, uh, we are not breaking between uh, uh, Swift versions. So, yeah, that's basically from words from Grid Slander. Uh, that's like a, the real Swift 1.0 version. Uh, well, that's my answer. Uh, could you provide me a feedback about how I did it? If I did it well, if I need to study more? What do you think in general about the answers for my three questions? You did a good job addressing the questions, Pedro. Here's some detailed feedback. 
One, optional chaining. Your initial explanation of optionals was a good start. You should also focus on explaining how optional chaining works specifically with an example. This shows a deeper understanding of Swift's optional handling. Two, struct versus class. You started well by mentioning struct as a model and value type. Understanding the key difference between value types, struct, and reference types, class, is crucial. Remember to emphasize how copying works differently between them and how this impacts memory and behavior in your code. Three, Swift 5.0. Features, you were honest about not remembering specific features, which is okay. Swift 5.0 introduced important features such as ABI stability, result type, raw strings, compact map values, and string interpolation. Um, it's good to mention a few of these specifically, even if just one or two. Overall, your answers show a good understanding, but there's room for deeper explanations and more specific examples. Before the interview, it would be beneficial to review key differences between value and reference types, as well as significant updates in recent Swift versions. Practicing with examples and focusing on the reasoning behind these concepts will also help. You're on the right track, and with a bit more review and practice, you'll be well prepared for your interview. So, uh, as you can see, um, I'm I was like a, a little bit uh, um, of uh, testing this ChatGPT um, uh, AI. I don't know how to call it, um, and it was like okay, uh, really uh, briefed in the way out of how AI uh, reply. So in order to receive some feedback. Uh, I was really honest about the third question. I didn't remember exactly the new features for uh, the Swift 5.0. I think there are a lot of updates since then, uh, but that's great. So I received feedback directly for uh, the uh, AI and, well, you can just apply that. So that's great because um, when you are studying in, you know, any technical part, is, is come to say, okay, I know this well, but uh, but to be honest, can I really well can I really explain the the problem of of how this uh, technical concept is exactly? Most of the time, we could say yes, but in reality, uh, the other person could have questions because maybe we are not good enough. So yeah, thanks to this awesome tool, you can get that information really quick. Um, lastly, I will um, uh, talk about uh, another kind of mock interview, which is like when if I'm talking with a manager or so, okay? And I will try to be, you know, uh, be, be really specific about some questions and maybe answer some others not so well and see what's, what happened. So, okay, now I would like to have a mock interview with you, but this time you will be uh, acting as a manager and I need uh, so to answer your question. So could you ask, ask me, ask me uh, three questions, the most three common questions that a manager could ask you in an interview and also provide me feedback about how can, uh, how well or bad I did it, please? Absolutely, Pedro. Let's get started with a mock interview focused on management. First question. Can you tell me about a time when you had to manage a difficult team member? How did you handle the situation and what was the outcome? Feel free to answer and then I'll provide feedback. Oh, okay. Well, um, sometimes um, uh, being a developer, um, you need to deal with some, uh, you know, subjective uh uh, point of views, um, you need to, uh, you know, try to bring all the ideas that are, are valid, right? There's no uh, right or wrong answer, but the thing is how we can ensure that the quality of the product that we are developing is good enough. Um, and also uh, uh, having a good infrastructure, uh, in a way of uh, not breaking uh the the software uh, the, the code base in the next release because we made uh not well designed so um mostly trying to um uh figuring out 
uh, an objective way to solve this, for example, of finding documentation. What What is the documentation talking about a specific uh, tool that we have to use? It could be either uh, a, a language issue or, or maybe a framework or something or an architecture. But also at the same time is that, okay, do we have enough time to make a refactor or something? Or can we, uh, or we need to go further with something uh, urgent? So it depends of uh, what could be um, the best uh, uh, strategy depending on the moment. That's how I normally manage uh, my you know, discussions with other developers. Great, Pedro. Here's some feedback on your response. Positive aspects. One, collaboration and inclusion. You emphasize the importance of considering different viewpoints and ensuring the quality of the product, which is excellent. Two, documentation and objective solutions. You mentioned using documentation and objective criteria to guide decisions, which is a strong approach. Three, pragmatism. Considering the urgency and practicality of solutions shows you're thinking strategically. Areas for improvement. One, specificity. The question asked for a specific example. It's helpful to share a concrete story to illustrate your approach. For instance, mention a particular situation, the challenge you faced, your actions, and the outcome. Two, structure. Organize your response with a clear structure, situation, task, action, result, star method. This makes it easier to follow and more impactful. Three, outcome. Clearly state the result of your actions. How did your approach benefit the team or project? Example response. A few months ago, I had a team member who was very set on using a specific framework for a new feature. The rest of the team had concerns about its long-term maintainability. I, I organized a meeting to discuss the pros and cons, backed up with documentation and case studies. I encouraged open dialogue and ensured everyone's opinions were heard. In the end, we decided to go with a more stable framework that met our immediate needs while planning for a potential refactor later. This approach not only resolved the conflict, but also enhanced team cohesion and project success. Let's move on to the second question. Okay, I think I think you get the idea. So, um, I don't know if you, but I mean, having someone that could tell you the goods and not so good about your answers uh, to prepare for an interview, it's awesome. And I don't know if you know that, but there are some um, that services that provide some mock interview uh, for some amount of money, but I. Don't remember exactly the amounts, but definitely are way are more expensive than just the amount of money that you should pay for the ChatGPT uh, uh, membership. And this is not sponsored by any means, right? It's just my opinion and something that could be really uh, beneficial for you. So, well, if you need to practice for an interview, uh, because um, uh, it's a technical interview. It's a, uh, um, an interview with manager or even about design, for example. I, I don't want to talk about uh, right now, but you have a design interview uh, um, coming up. So ChatGPT 4.0 is a great tool for you. Well, hope you enjoyed this demo. Thank you and see you in the next one. Have a great day.